Alright guys, I have the Lippish all plugged in and everything is ready to go. So I have my ailerons, elevator, and the little servo at the front here is working fine. So I have an Admiral 1800 milliamp hour battery pack installed in here as you can see. So yeah, this should be a pretty fun flyer. It's very small, it's like the size of someone's arm, so hopefully it's not too fast. Got my throttle working. Wow, okay. That uh, rudder or taxi or frontal nose servo is very sensitive. Okay. This thing is very small. This thing is very unstable. That's for sure. Um, it's very sensitive. It's very sensitive for the ailerons. So, uh, I might have to put in some expo. I also have to do some trimming. That's why I'm flying in these short little circuits here. The CG here is all over the place. But, uh,. I think it should be fine. I'm sorry, my apologies if this model is very hard to catch. I'm trying my best to keep it close here, but uh, the size of this model isn't helping. I'm honestly surprised that this thing is even in the air, to be honest with you. And it's flying the way that it is. For a thing this size, and like taking how scuffed up it is into consideration, this model is a pretty good plane. Look at that roll rate. It's like an extra 300 as a jet. Alright, I have a minute on my timer, so uh, I'm gonna start landing it's a small plane and whenever i have these like strange little fast flyers i have more space when i land left to right yeah look at how much space i have there i won't guarantee that this whoa i was about to say I won't guarantee that the landing will be good let me go ahead and fetch the plane all right so that was my maiden flight on the Lippish uh, very unique to say the least um, I mean it's got marginal control here uh, it doesn't have a rudder so you're not gonna be able to do most of your aerobatics I was able to do some loops and it's very sensitive to the ailerons, don't get me wrong. So uh, I'm going to go in for a second flight, but this time I'm going to definitely lower the rate on my ailerons because that was, that was very strange. And the landing was uh, also very strange, so yeah, let's go and fly this again. Alright guys, I have the Lippish P15 plugged in again, for ready for a second flight, so I've got my throttle, <laughs> ailerons, elevator, servo's working good. Hey, hi John. Hey, Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. I forgot to add the uh, rudder expo, but 
For now, I have my Aileron Expo at 40% and 80% rates, and I have my Elevator Expo at 85% rates and 30% Expo. So, yeah, taking off! All right. I almost bit the dust already with that takeoff, almost. Almost went into the grass there. Oh yeah, elevator is much different now. It's not the most stable plane in the world. Also, there's a mosquito in my eye, but it's not the most stable plane in the world. But you know, for $30, this thing is a pretty good flyer. Still trimming out the elevator. There's so many little insects flying around me right now. This thing is so cool. Ah, hold up, gotta raise my hand from my controller. My face is itchy too. It's getting hotter in California. So, you know, when that comes, there's gonna be a lot more insects. I kind of want the cold back. I don't fancy mosquitoes. I'm gonna start landing. I couldn't really do much actually, I just realized I was on a whole mosquito rant. Don't mess up this landing, please. Yeah, better. Not again, not again, not again. Woo! Okay. Alright, that was my second flight on the Lippish. Definitely flew better this time with the Expo and everything. Uh, I wasn't able to do anything like aerobatic. I mean, I was able to do rolls. I'm not comfortable doing loops on this thing. This thing is just too unstable for me. But uh, yeah, she flew pretty well, it's taking the stability out of the question. I mean, she's a pretty fast model, she's pretty powerful. And uh, despite how scuffed up the nose is and She's a really nice flyer for $30. But uh, I also noticed that um, I was talking about mosquitoes the entire flight and uh, I wasn't really able to do much with the plane. But yeah, thanks for tuning to John's RC. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys, I'll see you in the next video. Nice flight, John. Beautiful flight. I like the donut landing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you were gonna make it. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the flight on the Limpish, so now let me talk to you more about the plane and show you what's under the hood. So we got this plane from a fellow RC pilot at our flying field for $30, and to me that's an absolute steal, because the plane brand new is $130, and the pilot also threw in an Admiral 6 channel receiver that you can see right here, and it is DSM2 compatible, so we decided to keep it in there. 
that receiver is $30, so that's an extra $30 there. And it also comes with a gyroscope, but I tend to fly without a gyroscope so I can do things such as sport flying or aerobatic flying. So we're just using the receiver as just a general flying receiver. You can also see that this model has landing gears on the bottom, and these were not factory installed. The landing gears are an extra component that you can add on, and these were $13, so yeah, to me this is an absolute steal. Of course you can see some signs of wear. You can see at the nose here, it is a bit scuffed up, but let's be honest here, you won't be able to see it from 100 feet away. But anyway, this model has a wingspan of 750 millimeters and it has a length of 495 millimeters. It's a four channel model because you're going to get your aileron control, elevator, your throttle, oops, sorry, throttle, and you have this steerable nose wheel at the front here. So binding this plane was a bit different than binding other planes because it is an elevon setup and that means your ailerons and your elevator are going to be on the same control surface. So it's pretty straightforward, you just have to go into your wing type and select your wing as an elevon and set your tail to normal. So other than that, it's just a normal bind. But yeah, uh, going back inside, you can see that the ESE has an XC60 connector and we're using a, an Admiral 3 cell 1800 milliampere battery pack. The internet says that this was the perfect balancing point for this plane, but we didn't check the CG before flight and that was a mistake on our part, but the CG was all over the place on the first flight. For the first flights, it, I just had to do a bunch of trimming. It flew very nose or tail heavy, sorry, on the Maiden, so I had to do plus 42 on the digital trim on my NX-8. And aileron trim, it was fairly centered, but I had to do some uh, left aileron trimming. Now, let me just say this is not a beginner plane at all. You do have to have some flying experience to uh, operate this correctly. Um, to be honest, it was actually a pretty solid plane. I didn't even expect this thing to fly with like this type of design here. I mean, the entire thing is like the size of someone's arm, as you can see. But yeah, it was actually pretty sporty. It was very fast because it had a it has a 64 millimeter EDF fan unit inside but yeah I was able to do my loops I didn't want to do uh, I sorry I was able to do my rolls I wasn't able to do a loop because uh, there was on my flight there was mosquitoes covering my eye the entire time but uh yeah that's pretty much it so thanks to, to John's RC and if you're new to the channel feel free to like comment and subscribe bye guys I'll see you in the next video